cake people welcome back i hope you like my new little intro made that myself you know so today we are making these chocolate covered oreos they're really really easy to make but they do use quite a lot of chocolate and um, i use candy melts but to be honest in the future i think i'd probably use white chocolate because it would work out quite expensive to use candy melts it used a whole bag for just these three so i got this cute mold um it was on amazon it wasn't expensive i will pop it in the link for you as always in the description so that you can buy one if you want to so i think this is really cute but like i say it is quite big it's much bigger than a normal chocolate covered oreo mold um it's probably about two times as deep. So I started out with a bit of powder on the inside of the mold. You don't have to do this bit, you can do it after. And I did actually put a bit more on after, um, but I left this bit in the video for you because you would have seen it anyway. Um, but I started out with a bit of rose gold just on the centers on some of them and all the way around for some of the others, just so that they all looked a little bit different. It's nice to have a little bit of difference in them and them not all be identical. Obviously, if you want them to all be identical, that's absolutely fine. Um, not using anything special on the brush. There's no um, rejuvenator or anything. I'm just dry dusting it on and then popping on some more luster dust after this as well. I'll link all of these in the description for you so that if you need them, you can absolutely go and buy them and have exactly the same. So this one, like I say, is a rose gold. I just went for the center on this one. Um, I actually really liked the way just doing the center came out. So in the future, I probably would do that and not do the edges as well. It looked, it gave it quite a nice aesthetic and um, it looked more 3D, if you like. So we pop those in and then once you put the chocolate in, that will transfer onto the chocolate and the mold will come out clean. Um, so now we're using a dust and we're using a really, really fluffy brush. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know we always use a super fluffy brush for this dust. We use this dust quite a lot and brushing that all the way around the inside of the mold. Now, the third one, I did no additional color on at all. I only used the luster dust. And again, that came out really, really nice. We did a little bit more work on them once they were out, but not too much. Like I say, these are super, super simple. So I also put an extra filling in there as well. So I will show you that in a moment, but you don't have to. I felt because they were quite deep, the extra filling was quite nice to add in there. Okay. I say okay too much. I'm really sorry about that. So I hope you like the videos with the voiceovers. We've been doing this for a while now instead of the written instructions. Um, if there's any other instruction you'd like adding in there, let me know. If there's videos for things you'd like to see that you haven't seen on my channel, please let me know and I'll aim to make those for you if I can, if it's something in my remit or something that I generally do. A lot of my videos t at the minute at least tend to be cake schools and such like that. So like I say, I used candy melts. I did use um, a normal white vanilla, not the bright white because I coloured it. So it didn't really matter. So I'm using Colour Mill Blush. These are my favourite colours to use in chocolate because they are fat dispersible. So they won't cause the chocolate to seize. You don't need to add anything in to stop it from seizing. They mix really, really well and you don't need a lot of them. Again, I'll link these for you below. Really easy to get hold of as well. So we're popping them to around half full or half empty if you're a pessimist. Um, and then wiggling the mold and giving it a good jiggle and a tap to make sure we get the air bubbles out from down the bottom and then just balancing that oreo in there to make sure it doesn't go too far down and then what i've used here is some lotus biscoff spread it looked kind of gross but actually apparently they were really really nice i'm gluten free so i couldn't actually eat any of these um i have to rely on people in my house and friends there's the spread for you i used the crunchy one you could also use the um, they do like a sauce or you could use the smooth one again pouring some more chocolate on the top not quite full but then just jiggling that oreo around and making sure it stays in the center as well so that you can't see it from the sides once the chocolate has set and then we're going to do that twice more i did one without the lotus biscoff and two with it the second time around which you'll see in a moment i actually used a piping bag and that was a lot easier I think this would be really nice with um, a homemade salted caramel 
or a chocolate sauce or something like that they'd be really nice with the additional fillings in there but make sure you put the oreo in first so that you've got somewhere to balance your toppings on and you've got control over how deep it goes then and you're not um, getting anything that's going to show through on that top section because you really don't want that Okay, so moving on to the third one now, like I said before, I didn't actually use any other additional filling in this one, only the Oreo. So we're popping that in there, and then again about halfway, and then popping the rest around it, give it a good jiggle, make sure you get any air bubbles out, and then scoop the rest. As I said before, this used a whole bag of candy melts, so they do use a lot of chocolate. I would definitely use just normal white chocolate next time and colour that. The colour mill will absolutely colour those. They took about 10 to 15 minutes to set in the fridge. You don't need to put them in the freezer. The fridge is perfectly fine. And then we're just loosening the mould away from the edges and then pushing them from underneath, as we do with the cake scores. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that. That was the plain one that we took out first there. And then this was the one that had the rose gold all the way around the top nice and shiny you can see you can really see the color difference and then this is the third one with just the rose gold in the center i def that one's my favorite love that one loved how that came out so pop that mold away don't need that now so we're just using a bit of powder color this is a dusty pink by rainbow dust and we're just dusting it on dry no rejuvenator like we use with the cake scores again if you watch my other videos you'll see me use that quite a lot we didn't use that for the decoration on these we just used dry powder that's all you really need you need to make sure these come back up to room temperature before you start doing it because otherwise they'll get a bit of condensation on the outsides and that'll cause your brush to stick and mottle and you won't get a nice flush effect with the paints sorry with the dusts they won't they won't settle on the surface properly all the water will bead and you'll it just won't look nice it'll all streak so the way we're applying it we're applying it a little bit heavier around the center and a bit lighter around the edges it really does define those beautiful shapes of the rows and really make those lines and shapes stand out, which I really, really liked. And you can just see it close up there, how it really picks up on those shapes and the definition of the rose. Definition, that's the word I was looking for. So on to the last one here. This is the one where it had the rose gold just in the center. So we're just doing this really, really lightly on this one, going around the edges, getting the nice definition with the extra bit of pink around the edges. And just highlighting the definition on the rose in the center there but try not to get rid of too much keeping that two-tone effect which um turned out really really nice that one was definitely my favorite one then we'll add a little bit more design in one moment which you will see you can see i'm just pressing quite firmly on the edges there to get the petals just around the very edge to get give them some real nice definition and i do think that looked really cute so here we go, we're going to go on to the final stage of the decoration now. So we're going to use some rose gold, back to our rose gold that we used in the dry stage, but we're going to mix this one with a bit of rejuvenator. That's a food safe ethanol, um, I've linked that down the, in the description for you as well. Um, oh, that's quite a lot, but don't worry, we can dry it out and pop it back in the pot. You don't need to worry about wasting it. So there's the rejuvenator. I always buy the large one because there's a massive size difference between the two, but the price difference is only double, whereas the, the larger one is much, much bigger. So using um, quite a thick brush for this one, but tapping the excess off before we start so that the splats we get aren't too large. Okay, and then just adding a nice bit of splatty definition. I use this technique quite a lot. It's a really simple but really effective, quite modern, current technique that we use. And it's so, so simple to do and really does add that little bit of extra flair. So I hope you liked these little cuties. And again, please help my small page by subscribing and liking, leaving comments. All of those play into the algorithm and help me out massively as a small page. So thank you, thank you so much for watching. Do enjoy my videos. Follow me on my other socials, which are all linked below. And again, if you need any of the products I used in the video, they're also linked below too. Thanks a lot. Bye.